Welcome to the Fermented Homestead. If you're new here, my name is Anna, and on this channel, I'm sharing our journey of learning how to turn our home into a homestead. Today's the day before Thanksgiving. Normally, we don't celebrate Thanksgiving. However, hubby did say that he would really like to have a meal, so we're gonna go ahead and do that today, or at least the prep for it. As most of you guys know, you have claws, cat. As I'm sure most of you can relate, I can't actually get started on the things that I wanna get started on until all of the animals have been taken care of. And for some amazing news, this is actually the first morning that I have woken up without it being completely frigidly freezing, unbearably cold. That's what the motor sound is. I had to take the nozzle off because that was just too much for the cold. I got a duck egg. I'm super pumped. Let's go ahead and move on to the chickens. I don't know why ducks are so funny. As soon as we get inside, I'm really excited to share something with you guys that I'm working on for a while now. And most of you already know that I'm working on it. We also got three chicken eggs. Yesterday with the chickens was a slightly eventful day. Robert came out here with me. I've been scared to come out here because that guy right there has been very aggressive, both towards the hens as well as myself. And I'm not talking about just like being aggressive in mating. I'm talking about just like pecking them for no reason and just being a jerk. This guy here, can't tell if he's aggressive or not. But at any rate, uh, Robert came out here with me and helped me to teach him a lesson and let him understand who's the, who's the top dog. It seems like I might have to do it again. We'll see. This little girl gets out every morning. She's the escape artist. I don't worry a whole lot about it because we're just getting ready to free range them for the winter anyway. They knocked the hose out while I was uh, down taking care of chickens, so it's gonna take an extra minute. One of the nice things about having so few animals it takes very little time in the morning. I'm ready to finally show you my big surprise. Are you guys ready for this? Are you ready? Huh? Hmm? 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 Ah! Oh my gosh. Okay, here. Look at this. T-shirt I'm wearing. I have three new designs that I'm super excited about. Each of the designs is available in black and white ink, depending on what kind of t-shirt you want to order. So there's really six designs. There's six designs, but really there's three. So the first one, this one is says grow, harvest, ferment, and it has my da the daisy and the jar from my logo on it. This one's super cool. I love this one. There's this one that is a similar design, but just different stuff written on it. It's kefir, kraut, kimchi, and kombucha. These are among four of my favorite ferments. And this one obviously is sauerkraut, but I wanted to make it all look cohesive. So <laughs> the last design is one that I'm super, super excited about. Okay. Both of these designs I came up with and designed myself in Canva and I just kind of switched them over and all that kind of stuff. But this next one was a little bit more intricate than my graphic designing skills had the ability to do. So I found a graphic designer and had her design this one off of my instructions. And I think she did fantastic. And I'm so unbelievably excited to share it with you guys because I'm gonna be using this in a lot of ferments coming up in the near and far future. And I just really, I think that this is, I just love it. Okay, are you ready? It's so cute. Koji. This is like a, a fun cartoony representation of what the, the Aspergillus oryzae spore looks like. So it's just Koji and it's just the, with the spore instead of the eye. So I thought that was super cute. So anybody who loves soy sauce, miso, sake, amasake, all of those sorts of things representing. These designs are available right now. Link is gonna be down below. I'm also gonna make a comment and pin it as the first comment. You can head over, you can check these designs out over on my Spreadshirt shop. You can shop for yourself, you can shop for somebody you love, get them a present or get something for yourself. So I hope that you guys will check it out. Let me know what you think. And I think I have my plan for the Thanksgiving meal. 
It's gonna be kind of a mixture between carnivore, ketovore, and regular. So there are gonna be a couple things that are regular because my son and my husband both do not really consume low carb. So, I mean, they'll consume it, but that's not, they don't have, they don't have that to take into consideration. So they still get pies for me and for them too, because this stuff is gonna be delicious, okay? I have some really good ideas, all right? I'm gonna share, I'm sharing with you today like literally I'm going to film this and I'm gonna go and edit it. I wanna share this with you guys in case you guys are struggling for any ideas. If maybe you're low carb or keto, carnivore, whatever it may be, I wanna give you guys some ideas of ways that you can tweak things a little bit and still keep it delicious, you know, and still make it something that you don't have to necessarily make several of them, even though I am because I want them to myself. So. Some families are totally cool. They eat all day long. They just kind of graze and munch and stuff like that. And then they'll have their big Thanksgiving dinner, supper, whatever you want to call it. Some people just have like a really big breakfast and then they don't eat again until dinner or supper's ready. Some families are just like, if you eat a single morsel of food before this gigantic meal is ready, I will bite your hand off. Wherever you lie in that spectrum, something's here for you, all right? If you're needing to know what to do for like a really good low carb appetizer, two really good ones stand out. The first one, very obvious, deviled eggs. And I'm gonna be making deviled eggs my own way with my own homemade bacon mayonnaise. What? Yes, seriously. I've been saving up my bacon drippings, wanting to make this for a long time. I don't know which recipe I'm gonna go with, but I will link it down below whenever I decide what I will decide. I've seen two recipes, one from Dr. Berry and Nisha, and one from Ketogenic Woman. I'm sure there's others out there, but that is gonna be a thing, and I'm gonna make, make the deviled eggs using the bacon mayonnaise. So it's gonna be almost entirely carnivore, with the exception of like, the acid that you have to add to it. The other thing that is really great, scotch eggs. And if you don't know what that is, it's a it's a soft boiled egg wrapped in sausage and then like rolled in some kind of panko breading and people fry it, bake it. I'm planning on air frying it. I will link a good recipe for you down below, but I'm not planning on using that recipe entirely. I'm gonna tweak it to my own liking and I will be making a video on how I'm doing those, but that's gonna be coming up next month as part of a collaboration. So I hope you guys enjoy that. We have chickens. We have so many chickens. I can't even begin to fathom what to do with them. Our freezers are a cornucopia of, of chicken. So I did not buy a turkey, even though I wanted to. Our freezers are full and I had no room for it whatsoever and I could not justify spending the money. So I went out and found the biggest chicken that we got. This sucker is a beast. It could barely even fit in the bag. I'm probably just gonna be baking it in the oven. Pretty standard roasted chicken recipe. For Hubby and Malachi, I'm gonna be making pretty standard mashed potatoes. You know, got the cream, the butter, all that kind of goodness to it, make it nice and creamy. We're gonna be using russet potatoes for that because that's what we have. And for myself, today, actually later in this video, I'm gonna show you how we are gonna be making fermented mashed potatoes. What? Yes, we should have made it yesterday, but I didn't know that I wanted to make it. So we're gonna be mostly following a recipe by the Healthy Home Economist, and she has a recipe on how you can make it. You're supposed to do it two days ahead of time, and you, you cook up, make the mashed potatoes, and then you mix in yogurt, and the yogurt ferments away a lot of the carbohydrates and things like that that are kind of more problematic for your gut. So. We're gonna get about a day and a quarter in. I wanna make sure I'm getting that recipe out to you guys today as soon as possible so that if you guys are interested, you'll at least get a 24 hour ferment on it and you can have it in your recipe book for next time. I'm also gonna be making regular standard back of the French's French fried onion package of, of green bean casserole. Hubby loves this stuff. I'm gonna be making him a very large batch of it so he has it to eat for a long time. He, he actually went, stopped at the store on the way home the other day to pick up some of that. I think it was more of like a hint, hint. And he's like, in case you wanna make this, I bought these. So I'm gonna obviously be making that for him, of course. And then for myself, I'm gonna be making, it's more of a homemade recipe. It's not, forgot to throw this out there for you guys earlier, but I am following a, uh, I'm following my own kind of made up gut healing protocol. I have been having issues with my gut, having allergic reactions, horrible, not been great, and I know that I need to work on my gut health. Overall health, but gut health focused. So I'm doing a carnivore with fermented foods. I'm trying to stick to that fairly closely. And by carnivore, I do mean all animal products. I'm not excluding like milks or things like that, um, mostly in the fermented form. So 
All that to say, this next recipe is not really in line with that. There are fermented aspects to it, but it's just gonna be more of a whole foods type of thing. I'm gonna be using, I'm gonna be making it from scratch and it's just gonna be my own. Um, I, I'm really, I'm gonna kind of follow the recipe I'm linking down below, but I'm gonna make it my own. Um, and it's gonna be from Easy Family Recipes. I'll link that one down below. It looks like a super duper delicious keto, homemade green bean casserole alternative if that's what you're looking for for the, for the holiday season. I think that's it for the food. And then I'm also gonna be making pumpkin pie and I'm gonna, try, I'm gonna make a pecan pie, okay? For the life of me, I cannot understand how my husband does not like pecan pie, okay? And pecan, pecan, however you say it, say it. I cannot understand how he does not like pecan pie, all right? And so I'm gonna make it and hopefully he'll have it because he, I was asking him about it the other day. I was like, how do you not like this? And he's like, well, it tastes like pecans, doesn't it? And I'm like, well, really, no. It mostly just tastes like a brick of toffee sugar. So I'm gonna make it in hopes that he likes it because he hates nuts. He, he won't put nuts on anything. And that's also one reason I'm gonna tweak the Easy Family Recipes a green bean casserole because it does call to put nuts on top, walnuts. Ugh. I don't like walnuts, but I like other nuts, but I'm gonna do my own twist to it. And if you wanna know what that is, stay tuned. <laughs> I'll make a video for you. Let's go make some potatoes. All we need for this recipe is four cups of potatoes, two cups of yogurt, and some salt. So let's get to peeling. Now we boil until soft. Since the potatoes, ugh, since the potatoes are done cooking, and I've let I've drained them off, let them cool. Now we're gonna go ahead and mix up our potatoes. This is my homemade raw milk yogurt. It's about the consistency of kefir because it's completely unheated, fully raw. I wanna make sure that this stuff is nice and cool. I don't wanna add my nice, beautiful raw milk because then it won't be raw anymore. Glad I tested that. I thought it was cooled off enough. So anyways, we're gonna come back when this is under 115 degrees. We've achieved 108 degrees. So let's go ahead and get this stuff mixing. We're gonna use two different things to mix these up. The first thing I forgot in my drawer, tater masher. We're just gonna kind of get this thing mashed up a little bit. I feel like this is maybe not gonna be the appropriate vessel to use for this, but we'll see. Because I adding three more cups to this, I don't know where my math went wrong on this, but somewhere along the line, it led me astray. I feel like this might be big enough. We're gonna kind of get the liquid mixed in a little bit just so that the, the hand mixer doesn't like ooh, go crazy. They're just warm enough to where they're not like a solid brick of, of starch and just enough to be able to mix in the yogurt, but not enough to be able to um, make break down the uh, enzymes and bacteria that's in the yogurt. Because that is what's gonna help make the potatoes easier for my belly and yours too if you wanna do this. Okay. That's good. So starting out on low. All right. I forgot salt. I like things very salty. I don't wanna add any more seasonings or flavorings or anything to this because I know that the fermentation process is gonna add a lot of flavor to it. If you guys wanna know how this actually turns out since I've never made it before, stay tuned to tomorrow's video. It's gonna be out on Thanksgiving day. We'll be giving this one a little mix up, a taste test, and I'm gonna show you the rest of the things that I'm doing today in order to get ready for Thanksgiving and then the actual Thanksgiving meal we'll put out the next day. I hope that you guys are gonna enjoy this little miniature series on some holiday carnivore slash make making it a little bit more gut friendly Thanksgiving meal prep. I almost forgot to mention, leave this on the countertop, cover it with a towel and probably wrap it with a rubber band just to make sure none of the little buggies get in there, but this is gonna ferment on the countertop. Don't have a panic attack, it's gonna be fine, I promise. If y'all wanna join with me and see where this gut healing journey brings me as well as all my homestead shenanigans, click this button right here. That's the subscribe button. That's what tells YouTube you wanna come back here. Up here is a video that Mr. Google Pants thinks that you're gonna enjoy. Down here is gonna be one of my last keto cooking videos and then up here is gonna be my cooking keto playlist. Make sure you check that one out for all kinds of amazing amazing inspiration. See you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye.